topic is managing hypertension naturally. So hopefully everybody got the memo that was sent out. And so we can learn how to hopefully bring our blood pressures down on a natural scale instead of popping a pill every single day. So thank you, Dr. Tahita. You have the floor. Thank you, Minister Rifa. That was a very nice introduction. And welcome everyone. Thanks for joining our discussion today on managing your blood pressure naturally. And naturally simply means by living your healthiest lifestyle. So our discussion is very timely because it just so happens that February is not only Black History Month, um, but it's also American Heart Month which I wasn't even aware of until after we had scheduled this meeting for this month. But each February, the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute um, uh, celebrates American Heart Month by motivating people to adopt healthy lifestyles and, um, and helping people to understand that your heart health is part of self-care, um, which is our focus. From the beginning of the year in January, uh, we uh, started our self-love, self-care, and self-discipline initiative for 2021. And it's never been more important than now because people with poor cardiovascular health also have an increased risk of becoming severely ill if you are to con uh, contract COVID-19. So they always say, well, you know, African-Americans were dying at higher rates because we have all these underlying conditions. So um, it puts you at a higher risk uh, if you contract COVID-19 and you have diabetes and heart disease and so forth. So we have to start taking care of these conditions now. Uh, now is, is, is most important for us to get started. So uh, research shows that uh, we're more successful at meeting our personal health goals when we join forces with each other. So again, thanks everyone for joining today because we're gonna learn how to take proactive control of our blood pressure by living our healthiest lifestyle to prevent heart disease. And when we take care of our hearts as part of our own personal self-care, we're also setting uh, a great example for our families and for those that we love to make heart health a part of their uh, self-care routine as well. So we always wanna accept uh, an example for others and be role models for others to follow. So heart disease is, um, the number uh, one of the leading causes of death uh, in the United States for both uh, men and women. Um, but um, we can still do a whole lot to naturally protect our heart by keeping our blood pressure under control. So for our learning objectives for today, um, we're gonna learn how your lifestyle has a very big effect on your blood pressure and your overall health. Uh, we'll learn what hypertension is and understanding what the numbers mean. Um, we'll talk about what healthy choices that we can make to lower our blood pressure and prevent hypertension in the first place. So um, uh, what foods we should eat that help improve our blood pressure versus the foods that we should avoid that uh, increase our blood pressure even more. Uh, and what natural remedies that we can use to lower our blood pressure. And then we'll talk about <clears throat> prescription drug therapy and, um, and talk, you know, just talk about whether it can be safely discontinued after your blood pressure is well controlled. That's a conversation that you would have with your prescribing physician. And we'll talk about how to have that conversation um, and how to get started. So sound good. Uh, we'll, um, if for people who have uh, questions uh, and comments, uh, if you don't mind just typing them into the chat box and uh, we'll address all the questions and comments at the end. I do have the recorder on. So uh, just keep in mind that um, 
it's uh, this is strictly uh, informational only. Uh, it's meant to uh, give you information on how you can live your healthiest lifestyle. It's not meant to diagnose or treat anyone's individual condition or disease process. So I'll turn the recorder off uh, when we start the discussion part of the presentation, okay? All right, so um, let's start with what is hypertension. Um, First of all, you have to understand what your blood pressure is. So your blood pressure is the force of blood that's pushing against the walls of your artery as uh, arteries as your heart pumps blood. So actually it's your cardiac output times the vascular resistance in your arteries. So um, if the pressure is high, over a period of time, then you can damage your heart. Um, your heart can become enlarged and your blood vessels uh, will start to build a plaque, which is called uh, uh, atherosclerosis, okay? So um, you want to uh, keep your systolic and your diastolic pressure within the, uh, um, within a limit of less than 140 um, over 90. So 140 over 90 is considered um, high blood pressure and that's when your doctor will uh, try to prescribe medications for you, but he shouldn't just do that. Your, your doctor should also talk about what lifestyle changes that you can make on your own um, which may prevent you from having to go on blood pressure medication in the first place or um, be able, if you're already on it, then uh, it can help you to um, uh, improve uh, your blood pressure even on the medication. So um, never think of medications as a crutch. It's, that's the only thing. As long as I'm taking my medication, I, don't, I can eat what I want. I can do whatever I want. That's not the case. You want to always do everything that you can naturally to uh, prevent heart disease as well. And those are the things that we're gonna talk about today. So your normal blood pressure is uh, 120 over uh, 80 or less, all right? And you're, uh, it's called prehypertension when you're staying in the range of over 120 to 90, but you're not actually classified as hypertensive until you're over 140. Okay, and then for state, and that's called stage one, and stage two is over 160 over 100 on a consistent basis. So remember, uh, the important thing here is that it needs to be consistent. Our blood pressure fluctuates uh, up and down every day. So um, after consistent readings over time and your blood pressure staying up there high, then um, that's when you need to be concerned and you really need to start taking action. So, you know, if you're not on blood pressure medication, you can start taking action now if you're considered in that pre-hypertension stage of, uh, of close to 140. Uh, or, or close to 90, okay? Uh, and any questions that you have, just feel free to type it into the chat, all right? So what does your lifestyle have to do with your blood pressure anyway? So the things that you do and the foods that you eat have a big impact on your blood pressure and your overall health. So just following the right lifestyle can lower your blood pressure, or keep you from getting blood pressure, um, getting high blood pressure in the first place, right? It also can reduce your need for blood pressure medication, make the medications work better if you do take them and lower the chances that you'll have a heart attack or stroke or develop kidney disease. So your heart, uh, your blood pressure is very important, all right? so. There, we're going to talk about five simple things that you can do to lower your blood pressure naturally. And they seem simple when you read them, uh, one, two, three, four, five here, but they can be challenging to do. 
very challenging to do. So that's why people prefer to take medications often because they don't want to put in the work that it takes to live a healthy lifestyle. It's not the, the comfort road. It's the road of, um, of challenges and self-discipline and self-care and self-love. And once we increase that, uh, just our mindset that I care about myself to want to do better. I love myself enough to want to do better. I can uh, be self-disciplined more. I can discipline myself more. I can do it. So once we change our, our mindset, that's the key. So the first thing um, we can do is if you're overweight, you can lose weight. And we're going to talk about each one of these uh, very in detail. Um, if, uh, if you're eating too much salt, which many of us are, we're going to talk about how to eat less salt. Um, what, what foods, what fruits and vegetables that we can choose uh, to eat to be healthier versus um, a diet uh, that is high in meats and high in sweets. So we want to reverse that to a diet that's low in meats and low in sweets. And we'll talk about why and the importance of each of that. And then also we want to increase our activity, um, do something active at least for 30 minutes a day and reducing and minimizing the amount of stress in our life. So those five things together can have a huge impact on your blood pressure. So I want everybody, if you're at your computer or you can type in your chat, we can't, it's easier to take, you know, when you're trying to eat an elephant, you're gonna eat an elephant one bite at a time. So it's better to, rather than taking all five of these and trying to do everything at once, we could decide, well, which one do we think out of these five things which one do we think would be the easiest for me to start with that's applicable to me? So type that in the chat if you don't mind. Just pick one and say, well, if I had to just pick one out of all five of these, which one would it be? Losing weight, eating less salt, choosing a healthier diet, doing something active for 30 minutes a day, or reducing stress by um, meditation and relaxation exercises and things like that. Which one would be the easiest for you to start with? I'm not sure where the chat is located. Okay, so the chat, if you just click on your screen, the chat mm -hmm. will like pop up, it should. Um, All right, let's see, maybe it's under more. Okay, I see, you it. see it. Okay. Okay, yes, got it. And then we're gonna talk at the end, we'll talk about how we get started with whatever it is that you wanna get started with. Okay, I'll give everybody a chance to type theirs in. All right. So did anybody choose losing weight? Cause we're gonna start with losing weight. Can't see all of the. Okay. All right, let's talk about losing weight, which has to do with everything that the other four items. Has, but uh, just overall, if we just say, okay, when it comes to losing weight, people don't usually choose that one because. Um, it seems like it's more complicated than it really is. Um, a lot of us think, well, I, I've tried so many times and I, it's really so hard to lose weight and, and, and I can't do it. So if you say that you, you can't lose weight, then you're right, you can't. But if you say that you can, then you're also right. It's all in your mindset. It's what you say that you can do is what you can do. If you say you can't, you can't. All right. So let's say that we can, and let's say that we will. So it starts there. Um, we can set a goal for ourselves. Uh, that a goal that would we would choose. How how do I feel? What weight am I when I feel my healthiest? When I feel like I look the best and I feel the best? 
what weight is that? And set that as your goal, all right? Don't forget about your BMI and what charts say about your height and weight. You decide how do, what weight am I where I feel the best, where I know I'm the healthiest. And then decide that it's, it's really not rocket science, even though it seems that way, but your output has to be more than your intake. That's all. So you have to eat less and move more. If you just move more and then you come back home and eat like uh, there's no tomorrow, uh, then you're not going to lose a pound, not even a half a pound. Um, you could be exercising for two hours a day and then come home, eat all the wrong food and eat too much food and you just, it's not gonna happen. So you have to think of both, uh, eating less and moving more, okay? That works the best. There's no single weight loss diet or activity that's better than any other. You have to find what works for you. What works, what plan is the one that you're gonna be able to stick with? Nobody else's plan. You figure out your own plan. What can I live with? What, what is easiest for me, okay? And then that's what you go with. So, but we're gonna, help you to make those decisions today as to uh, what would be easiest for you, okay? So um, the thing is, is that you can't expect to um, change if you're doing the same thing over and over again. So uh, and you're gonna just get the same results. So you have to abandon your old habits and take up the ones that you know are the right things for you to do, but you have to sacrifice something, all right? So that's losing weight. Um, and again, it is, you know, I, I just said to my sister the other day, she thought she wasn't losing weight fast enough because she had, you know, we've been doing pretty good now since the beginning of the year and that she thought she should be losing it faster when I, I said, well, it took you more than this amount of time to gain the weight. So it usually takes uh, twice as long to lose it. So don't expect results overnight. The main thing is that you stick with it, all right? It's consistency and it's a lifestyle. It's like, I'm gonna have to do this for the rest of my life. That's the commitment that we have to make, all right? So, the second thing for keeping your blood pressure down after um, and losing weight is the salt. You got to reduce the salt. So if you look at that salt shaker over there, you see that 68% of the salt in our diet comes from processed foods. And we're going to talk about processed foods that we buy in the grocery store every day. All right, 68% comes from there. Then for us who are going out eating at restaurants, which since COVID, we're not doing that anymore, but um, you know, you'll find that a, a 15, at least 15% of the salt in your diet will come from restaurant meals. And uh, about 13% of you adding salt to your food while you're cooking or um, using table salt, which is not good at all, uh, but only 4% of your diet, only 4% is naturally found in the food itself. So, um, so when you think about it from that perspective, um, if you're eating natural foods without adding salt, staying out of the restaurants and staying away from processed foods, you won't have a problem reducing your salt at all. So, uh, processed foods are foods that are no longer in their natural state because through a chemical process or through uh, uh, freezing or jarring or uh, boxing and bags and all those things that you buy, uh, those are processed foods. And we'll talk about what the dangerous processed foods are and why. So the key thing is that you wanna improve your diet. You wanna eat the best fresh fruits and vegetables and leave the rest, all the junk food. So even if we say to improve our diet, we're just gonna start with 
eliminating all of the junk food. We're just not gonna, we're gonna stop buying chips and, and cookies and, and, and all the sweets and staying away from those kinds of things. And we're going to uh, uh, limit that and, and bring more fresh, healthy fruits and vegetables into our diet. Now let's talk about that. We're gonna break that down for you. So when you're in the food aisle, in the grocery market and we're, we're buying all those box foods and bag foods and processed foods. The ones that are the most dangerous are the labels that you can't read, all right? If you're buying a jar of strawberry jam and it doesn't start with ingredient strawberries, but it starts with all kinds of sugar and usually the thing that's at the top of the list is what's in it the most. Uh, so, um, and then if you get to reading a label like this, you can't understand a word that it's saying. Um, anything that starts with enriched flour is bleached or unbleached. Hidden sugars in this label, you'll see fructose, sugar, uh, sucrose, and dextrose. It's not just high fructose corn syrup. Most people recognize that, but it's also all kinds of other sugars in here. Artificial sweeteners are dangerous. They, um, the sucralose and saccharin and aspartame, all of those have been found to be cancer causing. Lots of salt in here too. It's under the disguise of sodium uh, acid, uh, pyrophosphate and, and things like that. Uh, the partially hydrogenated oils are the trans fats. Those are trans fats are all through here. <laughs> Preservatives like TBHQ and, um, and nitrates and things like that. Gelatin from animal products is in here. MSG, uh, monosodium glutamate. Those are the things that make this taste, it's gonna, this is something that probably tastes really, really good, but it has the most dangerous uh, additives and preservatives and even the colors, uh, the artificial coloring. Um, the yellow dyes down there at the bottom, the blue dye. So those are the things that you, um, when you see a label like this, just put it right back on the shelf, all right? So what are the dangers of highly processed foods? So they're not just the things that are in boxes and in jars and cans and, and frozen, you know, it's frozen pizza, it's, it's microwavable dinners, you know, like the, um, all those dinners that are claimed to be healthy frozen dinners. Uh, they have lots of additives. They're usually often high in salt, sugar, and trans fats, which are the most dangerous fats that you can eat, all right? So those are the things that um, we will, um, in living, your healthiest lifestyle and eating the healthiest foods, these are the things that you want to, if you can't cut it out completely, which is hard to do because it's fast foods all around us and everywhere, especially fried foods. You know, um, There's certain things that we can pick out of this and say, you know what? I'm just gonna stop eating that. I'm not going to buy it anymore. I don't want it anymore. And, and um, you know, and this is the one thing that I like the most, but I'm going to sacrifice that. So it's you making your own choices. Nobody can tell you what to do. You know what you're doing wrong. Most of us do. And we just have to have the the discipline, the self-discipline, the self-care, the self-love that it takes to avoid these kinds of highly of processed foods that are so dangerous for us that harden our arteries and lead to high blood pressure, stroke, and heart disease, okay? So what are those foods? What are, what are the five things that we're going to try to take out of our diets and eliminate? Processed foods, number one, highly processed food. You can't, you know, all foods are processed in some ways, but the ones that are highly processed are the ones that I just told you about. So um, animal proteins, any type of meat is usually high in saturated fats or are high in sodium, like sausages, you know, 
I haven't, I don't eat sausage. I don't eat any of the, you know, but smoked meats, smoked meats are packed with salt. You never have to add salt to a smoked meat, right? Um, bacon, even if it's turkey bacon, turkey bacon has nitrates and salt in it. So if you're really doing the best that you can, those are things that you would just eliminate too. Um, uh, cured cheeses um, uh, and egg yolk even. So um, if you're really serious about it and you like eggs, you could start eating uh, the uh, white part of the eggs versus the egg yolk. But these are, you know, these are just, um, I'm not saying don't eat any meat. You can eat, there's healthier meats that you can eat like fish, we'll talk about that. But um, these are the ones that you wanna try to eliminate, especially uh, sausages, smoked meats and bacon, cheeses and things like that. Fried foods, there's so many different ways you can cook food now that tastes so good without frying foods um, and just not and staying away from um, places that sell fried foods like Popeye's the worst. They use that same oil over and over again. Um, it's, it's disgusting. Um, so, it, you know, staying away from uh, fast food places that sell fried foods um, because it contains a lot of saturated fat and salt, which hardens your arteries and makes your blood pressure even worse and causes heart disease. So alcohol, for people who drink, um, you know, even you might think, well, wine is good. Wine has a lot of calories in it. You have to think about it that way. Plus, um, even three glasses of wine a day can increase your blood pressure. But basically, alcohol at any type, people say, well, it doesn't have calories, uh, you know, straight whiskey and gin and things like that. But it lowers your metabolism and it, um, it makes you sluggish and it will also increase your blood pressure. So alcohol, and then of course, smoking. I don't think there's probably anybody on this call who smokes, but if you do, then that constricts your blood vessels and it will cause your blood pressure, your blood pressure to rise also. All right, so um, stimulant beverages like caffeinated drinks, um, too much coffee. I'm not saying don't drink coffee at all. There's people in, in Guatemala, I was just saying yesterday, who's, their, their children grow up drinking coffee and they have no hypertension in their country. So um, it's just uh, um, soft drinks are, are the worst because it's not uh, just caffeine, but it's the sugar in it. So you wanna stay away from that too. And artificial ones aren't good either. Which I told you about the artificial sugars you wanna stay away from. All right, so what can you eat? These things you love, I'm sure you do. I love these foods. It's just that you have to go out and buy them. You have to fix them. You have to go to the grocery market more. Um, you gotta find organic, you know? So there's lots of things that go into eating healthier, but if you love yourself enough and you care about yourself enough and you can be disciplined enough to do it and take the time to do it, we can eat these things on a regular basis. And, and be healthier, all right? So we want foods that are high in potassium and magnesium and low in sodium. So what are those things? All your beans, beans are whole proteins that are very, very healthy because they're packed with potassium and magnesium and, and, and all the minerals that um, are needed and it's plant-based, okay? But it's still a whole protein. So you can have a dinner with just, you know, navy beans or lentils and, and still get that protein without eating meat. Um, then you have beets and spinach and broccoli and carrots, asparagus, squash, all those kinds of vegetables are packed with potassium and, and magnesium. Um, on, your, on the fruit side, it's not just bananas even oranges, honeydew, cantaloupe, grapes, that all has uh, high in potassium and magnesium. Uh, whole grain foods, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, rather than refined 
uh, foods. We want um, unrefined uh, grains and, and whole grain foods. Uh, the diuretic foods that help you to lose the fluid that causes high blood pressure when you're retaining fluid. Many of us take diuretics as our blood pressure medication. You wouldn't need to take diuretics if you were eating um, the right foods in the beginning that are, uh, they're not fluid, uh, you're not going to be retaining fluid. So diuretic foods are grapefruits and pears. Um, which my mom, she eats all the time, which is great. <laughs> and um, vasodilator foods uh, that actually uh, relax your blood vessels are garlic and celery. Celery is excellent for high blood pressure. You could just eat celery stalks uh, and uh, it will help lower your blood pressure too. You can have like three celery stalks a day and just eat them. Um, and they're delicious if you buy organic. Remember, when it comes to organic, you want to uh, think of it this way. There's the clean 15 and the dirty, uh, dirty dozen. The dirty dozen are the vegetables and fruits that have a thin skin or no skin. And those that, so when they're sprayed with pesticides, uh, they absorb those pesticides very easily. So when you eat them, you're eating the pesticides. And the pesticides are strong enough to kill any uh, insect that touches the plant or is anywhere near it. So just think of you now ingesting that, all right? So you want to, um, um, if you have to choose between, well, I can't afford to buy all organic, but if you wanted to, the foods that, you could buy, which would be called the clean, um, the clean 15 would be the fruits and vegetables that have a outer, uh, a thick um, skin, like cantaloupes have a thick skin, honeydew has a thick skin, um, even bananas, but we still buy them organic because they inject preservatives and bananas to keep them from rotting so fast. So you still want to get organic bananas, but you can use that as a a rule of thumb. If it's a thin skin, you want it to go organic. If it's a thick skin, it's okay, like an avocado maybe. But I still try to buy everything organic if possible. Then your omega-3 rich foods, which we're talking about. If you eating meat, um, you know, is, is a thing where over time, um, you can gradually reduce the red meats. And of course, nobody's eating pork anymore these days, um, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> so um, you wanna stay away from the red meats. They're the dangerous meats that cause inflammation in your arteries and cause high blood pressure. If you want to stick with your wild caught salmon, not, not farm raised, all your fish should be wild caught. Um, avocado, flaxseed oil, these are rich in omega-3 and will help lower your blood pressure versus increase it. Uh, the ones that increases, increase it are the omega-6 uh, oils, which we'll talk about in a minute. So what are the healthier oils? You want to always use unrefined oils, that's your extra virgin olive oil pure olive oil, avocado oil, hemp oil, flaxseed oil. The refined oils are your canola. Canola is not even found in nature. It's a, it's a chemically made oil. So that's not healthy for you as well. And some of these have trans fats in them like vegetable oil, uh, soybean oils and things like that. Even grapeseed oil is, is you know, advertised as being a healthier oil, but it has a, a high uh, boiling point and it's good for deep frying. But since we're not gonna be deep frying, we don't need grapeseed oil, all right? So for, you know, we can stick to the basics. It doesn't have to be a lot of things. It can just, just stick to olive oil, okay? You don't even have to use any other kind of oil. Just stick with olive oil. And what are the healthier carbs? So basically, if it's white, it's kind of just the opposite. They use, you know, everything that's white is supposed to be good for you. <laughs> everything that's black, you know, have we been taught uh, over the years? You can even look in the dictionary. Well, it's the exact opposite. Think of everything that you were taught and think of the exact opposite. 
So it's the white rice that you should stay away from, okay? And use brown rice or brown or rice cauliflower. The white potatoes are the ones that are dangerous. Cauliflower is better. Uh, regular pasta, replacing that with whole wheat pasta or uh, like a spaghetti squash. Um, white bread, anything that's white, you can pretty much throw it out except for cauliflower, that's white. But uh, replace that with whole wheat or whole grain bread. Uh, sugary breakfast cereals. You wanna find cereals that are high in fiber and low in sugar. Um, stay away from the instant oatmeals and, and go with the still cut or rolled oats that you have to actually boil. No, I'm not. Um, um, does someone need to go on mute? And uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, most corn is GMO corn. So uh, you want to be careful about that when you're buying corn. Just uh, you could just stay away from it because it's very hard to find any uh, non GMO corn these days. Uh, so just replace that with leafy greens. Um, and then your potato chips and salty snacks. Snack on raw vegetables if you want. Snack on some celery sticks uh, for, and dip them um, or what have you. Um, someone said, what about anchovies? Anchovies are a healthier choice as well. Dr. Sandy. Um, <clears throat> now, so what are some herbal and nutritional supplements that you can use to help lower your blood pressure? So um, herbal teas such as um, hibiscus tea and hawthorn berry, you can take those as a supplement as well, but I wouldn't advise you to take it as a supplement if you're already taking blood pressure medication because it may have a reaction with it. I'd say um, just drink it as a tea um, and that can help. Uh, lots of studies show that it, it does uh, lower blood pressure. Um, the uh, cooking with herbs like basil and parsley and celery seeds, uh, those will help you to um, eliminate adding salt and things like that if you season your food with fresh herbs, all right? And then nutritional supplements, um, magnesium is very good for relaxing the smooth muscle, including your arteries. And so um, it not only has a stimulate a stimulant effect for helping you to move your bowels, but it also relaxes. If you have a nervous condition or anything, um, those you know, I used to when I get used to have um, get anxious, um, my my eye would twitch, and as soon as I would take the magnesium, it would relax my eyes. So it's it's very um, it's very good for lowering blood pressure. Um, olive leaf, garlic. And then um, also for stress, the vitamin B vi uh, complex vitamins are called the stress vitamins because it um, has uh, a direct effect on your nervous system, All right? Uh, <clears throat> so the, net, the last thing, this is number five, was reducing stress. Um, so how, what are ways that we can reduce stress? Um, there's many ways and we have to find the way that works best for us, all right? Um, meditating, fasting and praying regularly. Even if you took the meditation out and you just fasted and prayed on a regular basis, that would highly reduce your amount of stress because you're giving yourself and your time and your attention to the God within you who does not fear anything or is not stressed by anything. So when you're uh, uh, living at your highest level or a higher level of consciousness, then you don't fear things that would make you stressed or you don't, um, you're not living in a state of worry and panic and anxiety um, because you are um, consciously uh, realizing the oneness of God within you, right? So again, you wanna practice 
self-love, whatever self-love means for you, whatever self-care and self-discipline, um, practicing that alone will help reduce the stress in your life. And then remember, we had talked about stress um, in one of our previous sessions on uh, the beginning of last year. Um, we talked about how every situation that you encounter is neutral until you interpret it. So you can interpret it as something that's negative and not even see anything positive in it or you can find the positive in every seemingly negative situation. So um, just in doing that, knowing that you have control over how you are interpreting that situation. Um, maybe doing things like re getting a relaxing massage on a regular basis, uh, walking outside, exercising. You have to find the thing that you love to do because it's gonna naturally release endorphins um, that will give you the same effect as, you know, uh, morphine or anything, because it, uh, those are natural hormones and, um, and chemicals that are released in your brain and uh, throughout your body when you are exercising. You know how it's hard to get started, but once you exercise, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I exercise. I feel so much better you know, so um, you have to think of it that way. It's, it's all about how you're thinking about the situation. Practicing deep breathing exercising, of course, exercises, of course, with meditation is very effective. And just say to yourself with each breath, I let go of my stress. My mind is becoming calm and clear. Um, earlier uh, last year, we talked about EFT tapping wherein I tell myself what my positive affirmations are and I'm tapping on my chakras, um, uh, starting with my face. And, you know, um, so you can do that too. And uh, there's, there you, but you have to find what works for you, all right? And, uh, and live, I guess, I guess the best thing I could say is live in the present moment. Forget about what happened five minutes ago. It's not happening right now. Be present. Be present and be able to find the calm and the peace within you regardless of what's going on around you. It comes from within. Peace of mind comes from within. From the God within you. All right, so... If you're really serious, let's just say you're taking blood pressure medication and, um, or your doctor is on the verge of prescribing you medication. Um, you can monitor your own blood pressure at home to keep tabs on um, how well your lifestyle changes are working. And you'll be able to alert yourself and your doctor of what needs to be done. So remember, a lot of times uh, it's called white coat uh, hypertension. As soon as you get in the doctor's office and he takes your blood pressure, it's automatically 10 to 20 points higher. He's like, my blood pressure's never been that high. So that happens a lot. So um, you have to um, monitor it yourself at home, get you a blood a automatic blood pressure cuff. And when you're doing it at home, you should do it at the same time like in the morning before you start your day um, is a good consistent time to take it. And then um, you can track your own numbers and then you'd be able to give that report to your doctor and say, look how well my blood pressure is doing now that I've made the lifestyle changes over a period of time, let's say six months to a year, but, or, or less, it, it, it really depends on the individual. Um, uh, uh, usually if you're older and you've been taking it all your life, it may be harder to wean you off of it. And then it just depends on what medication it is. Like if the doctor might say, well, uh, I'll, I'll work with you, but I, I just want you to know that it's a choice that you should make with your doctor. You should be a participant, an active participant in your care. You don't just let somebody hand you a prescription and then think that's it. And that's the all in all, I don't have to do anything. But if you work with your doctor, 
and you say, okay, I'm really serious about these lifestyle changes. They look at the improvement that I made. Um, I've, I've done this consistently. Um, then the, they're usually more than willing to work with you, right? But they're not going to be the advocate. They're typically not. I'm a, I'm an advocate because I I believe in natural medicine and I'm a naturopathic doctor. So my viewpoint is a, is a lot different from a conventional doctor. So you know, in my view, they should be teaching you about the lifestyle changes first before they're so ready to put you on a prescription that. Uh, may have dangerous side effects. So the side effects can be worse than the, uh, the, the symptom that you're treating anyway. And usually drugs just treat the symptoms. As soon as you stop taking the blood pressure medicine, you still have high blood pressure, right? So it's not treating the underlying cause. But when you live a healthier lifestyle, you are treating the underlying cause. You see what I mean? See the difference in taking a drug that's just mm -hmm. treating the symptoms for as long as you take it. And that's why they tell you, well, you're gonna be on it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not true. Um, and unless you have some other stuff going on, you know, with people with uh, uh, thyroid problems or, you know, kidney problems, but typically the average uh, African American um, that, uh, cause it's very high in, in our community uh, and it's genetic, a lot of it, you know, we have family history of it, everybody in our family has it, but it's directly the, related to how we eat. So, so the point that I'm making is I'm not telling anybody to stop taking their medication. What I am saying to you is make the lifestyle changes that we just talked about and then track your own blood pressure. See how much it's improving. Um, present that to your doctor with a, um, a shared decision-making uh, opportunity this would be giving you to say, you know, where your doctor would be proud and you would be proud to go and say that, you know, yeah. and I would be cheering you on because I'm willing to work with you and your doctor, uh, your prescribing doctor, uh, with any medication that you're on that, um, that we can uh, do something to improve our lifestyle to uh, eventually get you off of it. If it's, if it's especially if it's causing more, more harm than good. Um, you know, uh, in the past, be, uh, before when I was a nurse, I used to take every blood pressure medication there was. Uh, the um, uh, ACE inhibitor. When, and then when I started getting uh, fluid in my legs and because of it. And uh, some of it would give me palpitations and, you know, cause hair loss. Uh, then we'd switch over to a beta blocker, be on the beta blocker for a while and then have the symptoms of uh, side effects of that and say, nope, I'm not taking that anymore. Oh, now you're going to change me to a, a calcium channel blocker. Well, I was done with all of that. And I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to control my own blood pressure by doing what I know that I can do. And so as a, you know, I did everything that to get myself off of it and I did it on my own. I'm not asking, I'm not telling you to do that, but I did it on my own. All right. So um, I'm not telling you what, I, so again, not telling you to discontinue anything. All right, and this is on recording, so. <laughs> so where should I start? So you're gonna start by making the changes that's easiest for you. So you could start with whatever you typed in in the chat box in the beginning that you thought would be easiest for you, start there, okay? So we have people who said doing something active for at least 30 minutes a day. All right, start there. And then once you do that, then start working on one of the other four things, all right? Um, doing something active again, all right? Uh, Dr. Sandy, uh, uh, eating less salt, start there. So to do that, what are you gonna do? You're gonna throw out the junk food, throw out the processed food that have all that extra salt in it, start there. Um, Eating less salt again, that's fine. All right, so um, 
then uh, once you conquer one thing, go on to the next. But when you're setting goals for yourself, you want them to be more specific. Like for the ones who are going to increase, do your 30 minute uh, exercise routine. Um, you want to, you know, you don't say, well, I'm just going to exercise more. You say that I'm going to walk for 10 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that I'm going to do this for the next two weeks. Start, start small and go slow and then build yourself up, all right? If you're just gonna walk for 10 minutes for the next two weeks, then the following two weeks, then you might wanna increase it to 20 minutes or 30 minutes. However, whatever is gonna work for you, all right? Um, then, um, so, so what it's saying here is that when, when it's too general, then it's hard for you to follow through. Say something and do something specific, uh, set your goal, that has a, a measurable outcome that you can say, well, I did do that. And after those two weeks are up, yeah, I did do that and I did it well. So now I can set my goals higher, all right? So the whole thing again is your mental attitude about it. How important are you to you? You know, how important is your health, really? Do you want to live a long life? You know, do you um, want to be healthy in your later years, um, or do you, uh, or do you want to have inflammation all through your body and you can't move? You know, so you, you know, you have to make uh, the healthy choices now, right? And uh, so that actually is my last slide, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and return, uh, turn the recording off now. And then we're just going to open up the floor for discussion.